Good evening and welcome to Gibson's Bookstore Remote. I am Elizabeth, the events coordinator at Gibson's Bookstore, and I am very pleased to welcome a New Hampshire author joining us virtually this evening, Hillary Crowley. She is the author of The Power of Energy Medicine, Your Natural Prescription for Resilient Health. Hillary, thank you for joining us tonight. Elizabeth, thank you for having me here. I'm so excited to be part of Gibson's. It's just the best bookstore. I love, I've spent a lot of time being over at the Capitol Center, then coming across the street. And um, I have a very, very warm place in my heart for independent bookstores in general. And that's sort of like the one in the heart of my state. So thank you. It's really an honor to be here. Well, we're happy to have you. Um, Hillary will be popping down to the bookstore this week to sign copies of The Power of Energy Medicine, and she has promised to come down a couple more times before the holiday season is over. So if you would like to order a signed or personalized copy, um, please do so. I'll throw the link into the sidebar. If you have already ordered, we will make sure that she your book gets into the pile for her to sign. Um, and thank you also to everybody who is ordering from indie bookstores, small businesses, supply chain issues are a nightmare this year, but we're in person. We have the books right here on our shelf and we are happy to give them to you. Or if what is what you want is currently stuck on a container ship off of the West Coast, we are happy to recommend something else. Um, to our audience members tonight, we will be taking questions um, during this event, so please put them into the chat sidebar or the Q&A, uh, or just pop in where you are coming from, or just some well wishes for Hillary. So Hillary, let's, let's talk about your book um, to our audience members who are perhaps not familiar yet with energy medicine. Can you give us just the elevator pitch or the, the, the cliff yeah. notes of what energy medicine is? Yeah, I, I think um, that's kind of the most important thing. And thank you for asking that question, because I I never want to make an assumption that anybody that energy medicine is um, something that no one else has. So sometimes I skip over and be like, you've got the energy medicine, you're human, you've got energy medicine. Anyway, let's let's talk about the story. But you know, I've gotten some nice feedback that says like slow down because it's a term and words matter, right? And so um, energy medicine in general um, refers to all the modalities, which you could actually almost um, equate to holistic medicine. So my book is about the hands-on healing aspect of energy medicine. So like acupuncture is a form of energy medicine. It's with the mer meridians. I don't do acupuncture. Um, homeopathy is like the plant spirit and the um, finer tuning of the energy, the frequencies of the body. Um, um, so the work that I do is I actually only work with the energy of the physical body. So that's either the most ordinary thought in the world or the most extraordinary thought in the world. I, I like your smile. You're like, where are you going? It's because either we have you believe we're we have energy, or you are like, no, it's just I'm just flesh and blood and I move because you know, mechanics. Um, I was teaching in Newmarket. I love that I'm in New Hampshire, so I can say Newmarket. I was teaching a, a beautiful uh it was a a class in Newmarket, and they asked me this question. It was a high school group. Um they don't do it anymore, but for five or six years, they dedicated one day to just teach the kids about the joy of life, the reason for being, and they brought in experts to explain what all their specialties were. They had a, a gold medalist Olympian from New Hampshire. They had um, a walking, you know, people who did walking groups. It was just really cheers to Newmarket, New Hampshire, right? And so I was talking to the football team. I'm not kidding you. They all signed up. They must have thought like this will be, you know, this will be cool. And they were serious. They were like, we want to know, we know that sometimes our energy is a bit low and sometimes it's high and how we, um, this is how we win a game. And so um, energy is real. And I said to the football team, I said, you're not making this up. You're going to want to be aware of how you can um, set your energy because it's not like a light where you plug into a wall. You are your own source of energy. That being said, my energy medicine is really energy as medicine, that I'm able to use the energy of my human body in my training to balance the energy field. So what I'm doing with my hands, I actually do in my office down in Portsmouth at Whole Life Healthcare. Um, I kind of have to say you have to see it to believe it, it's beyond words, but that's why I wrote the book, Elizabeth, because 
I see extraordinary things when we honor the greater consciousness. Well, you, you know, you know, cause you love nature, you know, it's like, obviously there's more going on, but we we've had trouble putting it into words because this part of us that does the thinking in the words can't put it into words. That's why, you know, that's why I wrote the book because I wanted to stretch myself to take something that's beyond words and put it into words. And we do that through storytelling, telling true stories and reporting from the front line. And I do think it's kind of the front line of healthcare. I really do. Does energy medicine, uh, do you have to see a practitioner or is it something that you can do yourself? Um, I, my goal is that I would love everybody to see, to do this themselves, like to see this in themselves. Um, when COVID first broke out, I had probably like 30 uh, people who um, I was like, didn't imagine the week before that I wouldn't get to see them again. You know, diff they come to me from oncology, they come to me preparing for surgeries, um, they come to me for wellness, for grief, um, for um, uh, sore ankles, inflammation, all sorts of things. My greatest prayer at that moment when I could not go back into the office and they couldn't see me was, I really hope that every single time I communicated with everybody, I really hope that I express to them that they have what they have inside of them. It's kind of like right out of the Wizard of Oz, like Dorothy, you always had it right inside of you. So yes, I'm a helper. I believe that we're supposed to help each other. I have a certain expertise because I've practiced this muscle a lot. Um, but in no way do I feel like it should ever be, I've got this and you don't. I can help you. It's usually just reminding people what they need. And then sometimes they're reminded, oh, this felt really peaceful and relaxing. So um, people, people, this is the one I will say to you, this is the one thing you do not need to advertise. It's like people, people are like, oh, I need help with my energy. I'm like, I'm here for you. And you I'm just constantly, you know, people are coming back. Yeah. You know, you say it, um, it felt really peaceful. It sounds a little bit like a massage for the soul. Can we coin that? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I give you permission to coin that. There you go. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. So, so how does energy medicine help a person? Um, wow. Okay. So when I know it's a big question, it's a big question, but like for a beginner, uh -huh. why would someone reach out to you? I like big questions. First okay. of all. So that's cool. Um, it would the energy medicine the energy healing i like to use so so can we talk we need to talk about the the title okay okay if i were to change the title of my book just a sort of insider scoop you know new hampshire to new hampshire this is a publishing public publishing company so one of the things you do as an author is you um have to hear from your um publishing company what your title is going to be and so i pushed back and i said could you add the word as in between energy and medicine so they said no because of the layout no is okay you got to be comfortable with no they said the power of energy medicine i think to answer the big question is the power of energy as medicine so you want to add to all i wanted it to be energy as medicine and even better would have been if they said the power of energy as good medicine so it's like medicine for the soul so you like that title, don't you? There you go. I, that that would have been a great title, you know, and I, I feel like you should push back again. So, you know, yes. Yeah, so it's yes, you can if you any medicine you have add energy to it so it can okay. help anybody in anything. Yes. So we were talking in the green room that you might read a section of the book would now be a good time for you to do that. Or have we already covered that in our um, got here. Yeah, no, you know what I wanted to, um, I wanted to, yeah, thank you. This will bring the point home. So I'm sure every author, especially nonfiction, they'll say, please tell us about your topic, you know, tell us about, you know, fungi and mushrooms and how to train your cat, you know, kind of things like that. And you have things to say, tell me about energy medicine is a, a question that reaches beyond words because it's beyond words to describe energy. It's like, just please describe your energy today. Anybody try it. It's not easy. So I was talking about how I'm like, wow, I've really set myself up in a situation because 
I wrote the book to explain what energy healing is. And then I'm in this, uh, I put myself in like a pickle, which is the happiest pickle ever, Elizabeth. But I put myself in a pickle because I got myself right back to the same question. Because I'm like, oh, well, I sort of wove it in. You know, I wove it in like a tapestry and to describe it into the book. And they're like, no, actually, everyone still needs to know what is energy healing? Can you describe it? So I, a colleague I met said to me, she said, Hillary, you put it in the prologue. You put it right in the prologue. So it's only a couple of uh, paragraphs, but I'm going to um, I'm going to kind of indulge and, and read it to you. Um, for those of you who have read the book, thank you. And um, the prologue was written after, you know, it was written. It was written after kind of summarize and welcome you into the book. And um, it just starts as alone in this world. Each of us carried our personal medicines. Long ago, we came together and each one of us in each tribe carried the medicine. The remedies were in sacks and satchels. The memories of generations of healing wisdom existed in the heart and the mind of the medicine person. Now our tribes are too big to hold us together. We are alone again. This is the time to restore the memories of how we heal ourselves. Each of us has the good medicine of wisdom from our own beginnings. Our bodies hold the wisdom of our own health. We are always healing from our starting moment to our finish line. I've been collecting my remedies too. The remedies were revealed as my prescription for health for myself and for the ones who work with me. I've gathered them together for you in this book. And I found medicine bottles in the doctor's bag my grandmother carried to her patient's house calls. The bottles seemed empty at first, but they are full of knowing and remembering that I belong to a family who has held the medicine for the tribe. Take what you need from these pages, refill these bottles and reclaim your own healing. Maybe you want to carry the medicine too. So the idea is that energy medicine is that we are born healing our own bodies. We're born healing our own souls. And we have these resources close to us. It is very much like the Wizard of Oz um, concept that Elizabeth and I just, you know, we just talked about, which is, you know, Dorothy, you've always had this with you. But when you're in the middle of a crisis or you're in pain, um, you need somebody to help remind you that um, when we bring energy and balance, yoga is considered an energy medicine. Um, when you need walking, I consider to be a sacred, the shamans talk about the sacred walking, which is just one foot in front of the other. Any kind of meditation is changing the energy. So um, I really believe that we naturally are um, gravitating towards the energy. Um, that we need to be healing every moment of our life. It's an inverted concept to we're always getting sick. We're getting sick. We're falling apart. We're deteriorating. You know, we're aging. Um, or if we're not aging, if you're a little kid, you're off, you're off balance, you have problems. You know, sure, all of that is true. Like I, I am very grounded in reality. I, I love the multiplicity of reality, but the deep reality is that we have this beautiful, um, very, very loyal part of ourselves um, called our body and our mind and our spirit that only we are in charge of. And that is the energy that I, that I wanna, that I honored in this book. So, and I referred to my grandmother, um, she was a doctor, my grandfather was a doctor, my grandfather on the other side was a doctor, my great grandfather. And then so I'm from a family of medical practitioners. I don't think any of them ever would have said they're energy workers. But I do think Elizabeth that like looking back um, and looking forward, if they were to come back from the past, right, they would say, we need to put the energy back into medicine that some call it the bedside manner we've become so specialized. I guess this is my specialty. I'll never be a surgeon. You know, I'll never be a dentist. This is my specialty. I'm happy to, to augment that piece that maybe we lost in all the specialization. That sounds really beautiful, honestly, that I mean, because so many um, medical practitioners, uh, they're just like, we're here to treat like the flesh suit, basically. And they neglect you know, the happiness or, or the emotions of the patient. Um, so what are some ways that someone, would you say that it's unbalanced energy or just someone with hurt energy 
um, or, a, a, or a heart soul, how would someone feel that they were in need perhaps of some treatment? Um, I don't know all of the correct words, so I'm no, trying, here, I'm here. reaching here. This is what we're doing. This is this, this is what this book is for. It's, it's, you know, it's widely distributed. I know there are a lot of books out there that talk about energy medicine, but my goal is to be right here in this pocket where it's like, what, how do we talk about it? Like, how do we talk about it? Um, imbalanced energy un, you want to unblock and balance energy. That's how we talk. That's the kind of the safest way to say, you know, I would never say hurt. Cause even that's like a tiny bit diagnostic Elizabeth, you know what I mean? Like, is it, you know, what do you mean? It's hurt. It's like, is it frayed and frazzled and just, right. you can, okay. as, as, as the person who wants to talk about what they need, they can say, I feel off or I have a need or something. Oftentimes it's just a diagnosis. And, you know, my favorite thing that I kept a secret for like 15 years, but I think I just, I, I want to continue. Why keep it a secret? It's not, it's actually not in the book. So here's my little bonus. My favorite thing is when somebody walks into the room and says, I have this, this, and this happening to me. It could be anything. It could be infertility. It could be cancer. It could be just a grumpy mood. You know, it could be um, problems with relationship, problems with work. But when they walk in and hear the magic words, you say, this isn't me. This isn't me. Have you ever had that experience? You're like, you know what? This is, isn't me. Yeah, absolutely. I have. That's the best way to know that your energy is off because then you have an awareness that this isn't me. Hey, sometimes I need to be gr grumpy. I'm like, I'm having a grumpy day. That means I'm tired. It's not, I'm not not tired. That is me, you know, so I'm going to take a bath. But when you're really out there, I love it when somebody says, I got a very serious diagnosis, but this isn't me. That's when they're ready to really fight, you know, do the fight back. Mm -hmm. um, hey, can I just back up a second though? Um, I, I work with a lot of, um, doctors and nurses and I'm relatives with a lot of doctors and nurses. And, um, I just want to say like, I, I, the, the, they I totally agree with, I, cause I had to see a doctor, I think yesterday and I'm seeing another one tomorrow, like, you know, for my checkups and so forth. I think that they are very specialized. And so that can feel like and I can't speak for all of them or any of them, but, but as the patient, cause keep in mind, every doctor or nurse is a patient to somebody else, you know, like everyone has a body. You can feel like, you know, you're being brought through, um, that your paces, you know, and there's so much pressure from administrative ceilings that we don't even see anymore to say, you've got to diagnose this. You have to code this. You have to keep track of this technology. Oh, and by the way, you didn't even have time to make eye contact. Like I see a future where we put the energy back to the doctors and nurses. Cause I think if they had time, they would ask for that. They would want that back. I, I, I think most, yeah, mo most practitioners start off being healers and they're, they're fundamentally healers with specialties. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that doctors and medical practitioners are happiest when they have the time or they're allowed the time to do that, to be like, okay, so I see you're here for your ankle, but how are you? 100%. Are, yeah. Yes. So to our audience members, if you have any questions that you've been dying to ask, please pop them into the chat sidebar or the Q and A. And so that we can ask Hillary questions. So Hillary, what are some things a beginner can do um, to, if they're, they're, they're like, something's off. Um, I have an appointment in two weeks. What are some things that they can do to get back to themselves? Um, first of all, um, understand that um, you want to stop the, stop the cycle of, um, sort of dis dysfunction where you bring more stress into your body. So um, just find your resources. Um, the, the, some of the resources could be a book that you find, you know, follow your intuition. And I mean that in the purest form where you say, okay, what do I need for comfort? Because so often stress begets more stress. Um, in one of my chapters, I talk about my low point about how I found um, energy healing. And, um, 
it was that I was, it's actually the chapter called Raking. And um, for those of you who have the book or who are listening to this after you bought the book, which is great. Um, it's called Raking, which is a play on words because in, um, in the hospitals and very popular, one form of energy healing is called Reiki. Have you ever heard of that, Elizabeth? I have, yeah. Is that R-E-I-K-I? Yes. See, yeah. you work with words. Well, <laughs> I I, my, my little brain, the first time I heard the word, somebody, I, I write, I make a joke about it in the book. Um, it's another energy healer who does another form, which is called polarity. And she was, um, she was um, telling me I should do raking. And it was this time of the year. And I was like, raking, kind of like Karate Kid. I don't know if you remember the, like the wax on and wax off. Wax off. I'm like, wax on, wax off. Okay, raking. I'll do raking. And I and I heard raking. And um, anyway, the point was um, that chapter is called raking, and it's how I was first introduced to one type of energy healing. Um, and I love that. I love Reiki. I think it's great, and it's just done a tremendous job, just kind of infiltrating our our consciousness. But what happened to me was I had to kind of like um give up oh you know what chapter it is actually you're gonna appreciate this i made a mistake with my own chapters Whoop. it's actually <laughs> the chapter four called help it's chapter four called help we just passed right the 20 year anniversary of september 11th mm -hmm. um on the around the real 2001 um i had just moved up to new hampshire i was newly married um I felt very isolated. I lost a job. Um, I just lost a job related or unrelated to the financial industry, um, which around 2001 was a disaster, of course. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for confirming that moment in history. It was a disaster, wasn't it? It was terrible. It was, yep. And it, it, it changed a lot of people's certainties. And it did. People, people had expectations of what the future was going to be, and that stripped away everybody's certainty of what the future would be. So the one of the most powerful moments in my life I wrote about in this chapter called Help, because I was trying to do everything just to distract. I'd spent the first 31 years of my life working on my distractions. What do we distract ourselves with? A little bit of technology, a little bit of like, you know, nature everything was overwhelmed at that time um and so i closed my eyes and i asked for help it was like probably the most sincere prayer i've ever done in my life and i just said help and from that there's my intuition from that my bot my body showed me um my body brain showed me that i need to go get a book on my bookshelf it was actually a book in my basement i hadn't unpacked it yet because i just moved up here and i found that book and then I went on to um, read that book. And that book, not only was that fun to read, it was actually a self-published by a friend of my husband's who, obscure, obscure, but it was a beautiful book about resilience. And then um, what did I say here? And then as I read her book, I felt like I was having a long chat with a new friend about resilience, suffering, faith, human love, and spirit. And as soon as I finished reading that book, I was led to fiction by Steinbeck and nonfiction by Barbara Ann Brennan, Dolores Krieger, and Alberto Villodo. I found unread books from college about art history, and I dove back into Joseph Campbell's work. Power of myth, man. And, and then finally back to a separate piece by John Knowles about a big tree that stood right down the street from my new house. So, um, we have resources all around us. Um, that's why I love books, but we also have memories. Um, and we have things where like coincidences happen. Joseph Campbell talks about that in The Power of Myth. So, you know, we all kind of started a hero's journey at the beginning of 2000. We knew some adventure was coming and uh, we started it. And um, for me, my hero's journey was to create a more beautiful, peaceful world. And um, it had to start with myself. You cannot pour from an empty cup. You are just, I love your words. <laughs> I just love them, Elizabeth. Yeah. Well, I'll like, just embroider them all on pillows. Will um, you? Will you? <laughs> I have a pillow right here. Here there we go. Embroider we'll, it right here. We'll Thank start you. with a Sharpie. Yeah. All right. So, okay. So Catherine has a question here. Um, 
Hi, Hillary. Wondering how you are able to bring this Eastern medicine philosophy into the Western medicine world. Specifically, how have you been able to work in medical facilities with legal or insurance red tape? And how is your work perceived by the doctors or nurses community that you work with? Okay. Um, <laughs> first of all, um, I'd love to know if Catherine is writing from New Hampshire. Catherine, are you writing from New Hampshire? We'll, we'll find out. Okay, I'm gonna raise a class yes. to New Hampshire right now. Yes. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna raise another glass to whole life healthcare. So I have my own practice. Um, I have a, my carry my, insur I know you're not really asking this, Catherine, but come on, let's, let's talk shop for a second. So I have my own practice in New Hampshire where you're not regulated um, against being able to practice hands-on healing as long as there's there's like no touch or manipulation of the body. My clients keep all their clothes on except for their shoes. Um, and why not the shoes? Because I want the bottom of their feet. I want to be able to touch the bottom of their okay. feet. All right. Okay. I was just I very curious. Like, the, I don't want to touch the, I, I don't, I, I, I want to get to the feet. I was going to say like, does it, does it prevent you from grounding yourself? Oh, good question. No, you're lying down. So you're like, you okay. know, okay. So, um, also if you're sitting in a chair keep your shoes on we're good yeah 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 okay. no this energy man it goes through everything it's it, there when i first started out there were all sorts of rules about watches and earrings and heating pads and you know what kind of shoes you wear and i don't know if we've just gotten stronger with it or i've gotten stronger with it or i've let go of the rules let me keep on to the question from catherine though okay so i don't think of it as east west i think of it as old new and I think of it as old, everything old is new again. And um, by old, we can go back to the ancient beginning of us, which is East, West, you know, um, Mesopotamian. Like, this is about how the human body has always held itself together. So I'm more interested in traveling through time and like going back to what's old and making it new again rather than thinking about East versus West, especially in this time that's so, first of all, global in consciousness, but also paradoxic and divisive. So um, I've been able to merge it by telling the truth. Um, in Eat, Pray, Love, Elizabeth Gilbert has a great quote at the beginning of her book, which is, tell the truth, tell the truth, tell the truth. So when I'm with people, I just listen to their body. I tell the truth of what I'm feeling or not feeling and we bring the humanness to all of us um sure there's there are cultures but every single culture has an uh, uh original um history of the village or the nomads and who who um what i said in the prologue like where i'm sure we used to just have to heal our own families we had to heal our own selves and then maybe we heal their village and now we've got this big global consciousness and you have to write books about healing to remind us that um, we used to belong to healing ourselves and healing our family and healing healing. So old versus new versus east versus west. Um, alternative balance is the insurance company that I use. I highly recommend it. They cover yoga instructors. They cover energy workers and whole life healthcare welcomed me in 14 years ago. I was. Um, I was, I met a woman um, at, we were at a yoga class together and it's a funny story. I love to tell it. It's not in the book. Um, it was a snowy day and we went to the yoga class and the yoga instructor couldn't make it because she had to come from up north and the, the weather was bad. So we ended up hanging out together. Her name was Cheryl. Her name is Cheryl, but I haven't seen her in years because she left and moved down south. But Cheryl and I and two other women uh, decided to stay and kind of like spontaneously do a yoga class together back 17 years ago. And when, um, well, maybe not 17 because I've been there for 14, 15 years ago, 15 years ago. So um, when the class was over, one woman was complaining of her shoulder. Cheryl walked up. She goes, I'm a massage therapist. They were talking shop together. The other woman packed it up and went home because it was snowing. And I was just hanging out like this, like a, like a, like a, Hmm. Hmm. And then Cheryl was like, Cheryl was like, Hmm. Um, 
what are you you seem are you a massage therapist too i mean i don't mean to like be the only one talking about massage therapy i'm like oh i'm not a massage therapist at all i'm actually trained as a medical intuitive and energy healing and i just love you know just i'm just watching the conversation because i'm thinking about her shoulder too this woman's shoulder and immediately Cheryl was like, zoop. She's like, wait a minute. And the poor woman with the shoulder, she was just like, and she, and she went like, she goes, oh my goodness, I need somebody who's trained in what you're doing because I massage people all the time and they just keep coming back and it doesn't get fixed. And I don't have time, kind of like she's a doctor, you know, she's not the doctor, but the same thing. Like I only have so many time, so many minutes to do the entire anatomy of the body. I can't do the energy as well. So funny story is that, um, this is whole life healthcare. This is how I got invited in. I was already going to whole life healthcare because they have a wonderful general practice there. So now you guys know the inside scoop. So Cheryl says, you need to come to whole life healthcare. And I said, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good place. And she said, I'm gonna set you up, but can you call them on Monday morning to, to get an interview? Cause there's an open room and I want you in and I'm gonna send you all my people. I said, I'll be interested. I'll talk to them about it. And she said, give them a call. I said, I will. And she said, okay, I'll give you the phone number. Do you have a pen? I said, no, no, the number is 603-431-6677. And she was like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. I was like, that's my baby son's, you know, pediatrician is over there. So of course I have it memorized. But to see the look on her face, she's like, you're good. You're really good. <laughs> I just love that story. I just love it. So they welcomed me in um they they just fill their um practice with people who have their own businesses upstairs and then it's called a concept you have to get welcomed in you have to get voted in you get supervised and i've definitely cut my teeth on um never diagnosing this is if you want to practice in a, in no matter where you are if you get a green light to practice and you get to work with doctors you never ever diagnose don't use diagnostic terms I have a paper that's signed that says I'm not overriding anyone's diagnosing or uh, medical advice or psychological advice. Um, that's a paper we sign, but it's also, I hold that in my heart. And it's a general sense of respect for integrative care. And you would be surprised how grateful all of the providers are out there in healthcare. They, they need this extra part. The one thing that's missing, Catherine, is that um, health insurance doesn't cover it yet. That will be a good day. That, I mean, it might be a good day, you know, but I think it'll be a good day for the patients. Um, then, then I'll have to do the paperwork with the health insurance, but um, um, I don't know where I'll be at that point personally, but there are hundreds of people who are, who are starting their energy healing practices. So we need to just keep saying, if you're feeling better and it makes you feel better and it lowers your stress, that is good for healthcare and good for the patient. So we got to just keep, you know, asserting our freedom. I'm very grateful for New Hampshire for um, not over-regulating that. All right, so I have a question related to Catherine calling Eastern medicine, medicine versus Western medicine. Um, and you mentioned that there's there's Reiki. There is there a version of this um, in pretty much every culture? Um, I'm thinking of uh, the Japanese have the term forest bathing, uh, which is, basically going out into nature into the forest and just being among the trees to basically just you don't have to take your clothes off it's not that kind of bathing yeah. it's just yeah. you, you go out and you be among the trees and you just kind of refill your soul a right bit. is is that a form of energy medicine a little bit i'd say i so so think about like um original medicine like shamanic medicine but even that term has been a little bit trademarked not that there's anything wrong with it but yes every culture has to survive because it did for the first hundred thousand years without an emt a firefighter service or a hospital or even a doctor whatever we did when it was just totally just the originals the organic beginnings and when you go back to the organic beginnings yes there were probably i need to go into the forest and there's a lot of science now around the forest and the ionic well there's language around it the ionic field and why the trees and the oxygen levels and the shade and um yeah you, we could go we could have fun just listing off things that would fit under the concept of like energy healing i think for me swimming is energy healing 
Um, it calms my nervous system. Um, it puts me in a different type of you know, the ions of the water. Um, there's this great book called, um, oh, come on, what is it? Um, it's about water by, um, uh, okay. I just caught myself because, you know, you're, I, I can see the cover, but it's all about taking pictures of the crystals of the water. If anyone knows it, throw it in the chat. You know, it, it's also, um, it was it, when we were able to take microscopic pictures of crystals and water, it, the, the water changes based on our thought. So you want to go really deep. Apparently how we think is energy medicine, right? And, and if you want to go into like how we've always had it, yes. If you do not touch a baby, I had a client during COVID um, reached out to me. She was actually, she's an OB and she said, Hillary, can you just advise me? Because we have a baby that was born in COVID and the mom's not let into the hospital. What? So the baby was, went to the ICU and I said, you fight to make sure that mom can touch that baby or somebody can touch that baby. We know that babies need to be touched. And even in, when they're in the ICU, they find ways to like bring them a sense of sound and touch and so forth. So from the beginning of us, our lives, and from the beginning of being human, we, requ we require touch. That's as energy healing as it gets. I, that's as foundational as it gets. And I'll stand beside that, you know, at all times. Yep. Chris in the chat says the book might be The Hidden Messages of Water by yes. Masaru Emoto. Yes. Thank you. That was it. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. I love how we all work together. Oh, I, now I can sleep tonight. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to find uh, the link to that book. I'll throw it in the chat for everybody to look at. Uh, but Jamie has a question. Um, I had the pleasure to meet you a couple of years ago in a group share at your practice location, and I've dabbled in energy healing and keep being drawn to it. In addition to your book and maybe others, do you have any suggestions for continued learning? And are there any mentors in energy healing? They are writing from the seacoast in New Hampshire. Okay, Jamie. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, she, she came to, we did that for three years. And for some weird reason, we stopped this December. I did for three years uh, at Whole Life Healthcare. We'd set up tables on Sunday afternoons and just share. Cause it was like too often we can neglect ourselves by helping everybody else. So, hey, Jamie, thank you. Um, okay, so one of my colleagues, Lauren Walker is coming out with a new book. It's called The Energy to Heal. She worked with Donna Eden and created an energy medicine yoga highly recommend it and i got to read the uh early uh, manuscript of that book that's just dropping right now what's Gives that me... called again it's by it's uh, it's coming out of llewellyn and it's called the energy to heal by lauren walker um she's out in uh, whitefish montana but she's a local new englander too she's got a she's got family in a gunkwit so pretty special person um energy to heal she worked with donna eden who wrote the original books called energy medicine um so when my publishing house said my book's the power to energy medicine i had to send a mes message over to donna eden who's one of the queens of the energy medicine world to say all respect all respect and and, and they're all like we know you can't choose the title it's all good it's all good because it's energy medicine it's not competitive it's 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 not um it's foundational to making the world a better place um jamie i'm trying to think um of other books I really, really love the four agreements that's made a nice resurgence. I bet you've seen that at Gibson's like it's just keeps yes, resurging. Yeah. It's so that that four agreements is brilliant because it takes it right. I think in their prologue, they say, OK, here's your life. Here's your thoughts. Your thoughts have energy. You work on these four agreements. They're foundational to um, what is what drives our nervous system, which is how we think and how we approach the world. And they go so far to say is you can create heaven on earth if you follow the four agreements. And that heaven, that that experience is your experience, which is your body. So yeah. Yep. Ooh, you're doing a good job. Energy to heal just dropped. That's in that's in pre-order right now. So thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. We'd be I'm I'm keeping a list here so that we can send these out at afterwards as well i have to brag a little bit for all you writers out there i also because i got to read the early copy of energy to heal i also got to blurb it so my blurb should be on the back of that book that'll be my first blurb as a new author that's exciting 
Yeah, it is exciting. It is exciting, actually. Thank you. It was just nice to kind of be supporting each other along the way. And Lauren actually had written on the back of my book. That's how we did this. Yep. Lauren Walker. So I'm, I, I know I'm plugging somebody, but I'm plugging a colleague who is very, very deep into the work that I do. And she's into uh, none of the hands-on healing, none of the intuition work, none of the medical intuition that I do. She has systems of like yoga where you're like tapping the K1 and massaging, like she understands the five elements. It's cool, it's cool, yeah. All right. Well, speaking of plugging other books, um, I asked you um, in the green room if you had any uh, thing that you're reading right now that you're enjoying that you might want to share with our audience. And you said that you were reading a book called Soar. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, it actually um, it's by Captain Tom um, Bunn, B-U-N-N. And um, for those of you who read my book, um, this came up. My editor noticed this, too. When I wrote this book, I didn't write the book to be an expert. I wrote the book to be to take you on the journey of discovering and doing my best to document sort of the ineffable, right? The the what's beyond words. And there were times where um, I had to admit that, um, you know, I was actually been asked to help somebody where I have the same um, pain. Right. So for me, um, I think one of my uh, I know one of my challenges in life is I don't love to fly. I actually get like pretty nervous flying. I know that I'm not alone in the world that way, but I'm also I also know that it's my job and responsibility to, when I have a fear that I face so much that I should that I should look at it and try to heal it. Well, through um, prayer and meditation and intuition i found um this guy to captain tom bun also well not also i just think he's very underrated he already um was an air force pilot and then he went on to become a commercial pilot for for like 30 years and then he didn't really like how the system was like training people to get over their fears it was very almost military and not very trauma informed and so he became in the third version of his life he became a very, very highly skilled psychotherapist who I don't think he wastes a lot of time trying to market his book because he probably already has enough of a career and he has enough people helping him. But this book, Soar, is brilliant. It's brilliant. It's a very, very simple way to change the way you think. And he understands the mechanism like a good pilot would about how the amygdala works and how the sympathetic nervous system works. And um, he's helping me unlock, um, just by reading his book, he's helping me unlock the t my tendency towards being anxious or um, uptight or out of control. So, you know, I highly recommend it. I really do. He has another book called Panic Away, um, which is on the same premise. And I think he's a gem. He's, he's out of uh, West, Connecticut. I think he's an absolute gem that um, he has, you know, that does, hasn't done like the talk circuit um, so much. So, I mean, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. And I've got his book on my bedside. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I think we uh, can wrap up with just one or two more questions. I want to ask you what have, and this is probably again, going to be a big question. Good thing that you like big questions. Mm -hmm. um, what has going into the practice of energy healing taught you about yourself? Oh gosh, that's a really big question. <laughs> um, well, it's taught me about life purpose. Um, I have other things I could have done with my life. <laughs> like I have other things, like I, I, I have other things that I, that I could do, you know? And, and it's like, it's taught me that like, you don't always get to choose your, when you, when you ask to follow your life purpose, when you ask to be of service, um, follow it. It actually, I'm going to plug it one more time. The power of myth, man. Do you know that book, Elizabeth? I don't know that book. Tell oh, me about that girl, book. Joseph Campbell, the power of myth. He talks about following your bliss, following your hero's quest. And what I learned about myself is that I probably have built into who I am, maybe through my grandmother, um, maybe through my whole family, my tribe, my tribe of my family. Um, 
that um, maybe we just feel better when we're helping people get better, you know, and that's my life purpose. And so when I look back, I'm like, huh, I was kind of like that in math class. I was like more interested in like, less interested in the math and more interested in like, why does my math teacher seem sort of like off today, you know, and, um, you know, life purpose kind of followed me. I, when I did have my big financial job before September 11th hit, um, my, my boss and I was, you know, I was making good, you know, I was working in nearby report and, you know, we had, I was, I was the, I forget, I was the communications director and writing marketing plans and so forth. He would come in from a run and he would drink Coca-Cola and I would call an emergency meeting because I would be like, you need water. And he's like, are you still talking about what I said? I cannot be watching you go out for an eight mile run and come back and not feed your body water. He's like, you're almost fired. He never, he never really fired me. But um, so I learned that life purpose is going to sneak up on you no matter what. So you might as well find it. It might not even be your vocation. I'm lucky that it's also my vocation, but my life purpose is also to write. And I could have, I, maybe I could have written something else, but I got to write about what I love. And so awesome question, Elizabeth. Awesome question. Well, now I want to know what else you would write. Mm. Are they secret? Are they secret? No, writers? no. Okay. You just like, okay. you just sparked me up because I'm so excited about what I'm writing about right now. So my next book is going to be about, um, um, how I adopted a child at nine years old and how he had uh it won't really be about that but that's like my opening you know qualifier so to speak so when i had a nine-year-old who i gave birth to in portsmouth i adopted another nine-year-old from the state of new hampshire so i i all of a sudden have two children and um the working title is the boy who calls me mom and so for a split second it will be about wow look you know this child um i learned how to help this child but the bigger bigger issue the bigger story is that it opened my heart and it broke me brought me to my opened my heart brought me to my knees do you know those stories everybody like brought me to my knees and so i became a better practitioner and i began to understand how we heal trauma from an energy side of life and so um i'll be telling some very personal stories like i do in this book about um just the beautiful moments and by beautiful if you guys know my writing beautiful doesn't mean like you know tra la la you know on um, you know rainbows and unicorns although i love rainbows and i love unicorns um it, it will have to do with like truly um yeah my next book is going to be about um the deeper dive more case studies um of of the people i see coming and going and how if we can heal trauma we're such an interesting species us human beings if we can heal trauma we can be so much smarter than we are now okay so um on that note uh i would like to thank you hillary crowley for joining us tonight to talk about your book the power of energy medicine your natural prescription for resilient health the power of energy medicine will have signed copies at gibson's bookstore you're coming by tomorrow i think yep. you said and she will be coming by a few times in december to make sure that you have signed copies why i do believe it might make an excellent holiday gift hillary um, it does. And you know what, if you tell me like who like to say, say, sign it for like Sally, Susie or Joey or whatever, um, I'll put a special kind of intuitive message in the book for each of them. Excellent. Well, we look forward to seeing you to our audience members as well. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.